Hey everybody, we're going to be doing a video today and I can't take myself seriously with this on. Yeah. <laughs> today I'm going to be explaining, I guess, my specific process of how I got on board or like how I started the process of getting on that list for top surgery. Keep in mind it's going to be different for everybody. I'm in Canada, so like there will be differences in different countries and continents, there will be differences in like whether it's age, whatever doctors you get, all that kind of stuff. So, okay, I need to put a hat on. Here we go. Getting in the festive mood. Okay. Um, I have a few smaller clips of like me along the way because there's been times where I had to switch doctors and surgeons and that kind of stuff, and this will be explained. But, anyways. First of all, I was very fortunate that I was able to find like a, a gender specialized doctor specifically at my university. I go to Carleton University. That step might be easier or harder to some people depending on like wait lists, but um, I was able to find a doctor pretty much right away. Uh, I found, I was talking to their therapists that they had on campus and they led me to my doctor. So I had two or three therapist sessions, maybe, something like that. So my doctor wanted to see me three times at least before she prescribed me testosterone. We're not going to go into depth on that, how I got that, but if you want to know, let me know down in the comments. I can make a separate video. Uh, and after I had gotten testosterone and all that stuff, uh, it was like a year later. Uh, I'm coming up on two years now. It's only now that my top surgery stuff is kind of like sorting itself out. My doctor asked me um, what kind of places I wanted to go to. So I'm in Canada and I wanted to go to Toronto at first. With that one right away, uh, they wouldn't accept my insurance that I have. Um, I'm living in Ottawa, but technically my residency is in Newfoundland and Labrador. And they wanted me to get this insurance called OHIP, but I'm already with the Newfoundland and Labrador insurance, if that makes sense. And so they wouldn't accept that. And I was like, okay, I can't just pay that out of pocket right now. So I guess I can't go to Toronto anymore. And I had been like um, referred somewhere and I couldn't get it after because I wasn't able to get insured in that specific place. And like, there was just, I don't know, it was just a very busy time, especially with COVID. And I just didn't really, I wasn't feeling it. I don't know. I don't know how to explain this anyways. Um, but I didn't really think that it was a big deal, I guess, because I didn't think it was going to happen. And now that it's like actually kind of smoothly happening, I just wanted to document my life. Um, because I never ever like researched how, okay, no, I don't want to say that, but. But then my doctor ended up emailing and reaching out to Montreal because that was my second choice. I had sent in all of my paperwork. I had sent in everything they wanted and they only told me after I had sent in all that stuff that they didn't accept my insurance, which was kind of weird because my doctor had already emailed them beforehand. But anyways, <laughs> I'm not going to show my personal emails, but right here, I basically just have a list of all the documents that they wanted me to fill out. If you are going to go through this process, there will be a lot of documents or things you need to get including like what past prescriptions you've had or like that kind of stuff like basically just proof it's like you have to prove yourself to these doctors to get the surgery i see where they're coming from i i like agree with it but i don't agree with it at the same time for certain reasons but i can go into depth on that another time but basically here's like a summary um an identification questionnaire health questionnaire uh pre-op questionnaire to prepare you so that you know what you have to do and different doctors will get you to do different things like some people will want you to work out your chest more my person like personally my doctor didn't tell me to do that but i'm going to do it anyway because i've heard other people say it helped um some doctors get you to take a bunch of specific vitamins to help with i guess blood flow and like your skin elasticity elasticity el elasticity oh my god i can't say it I'll just spell it, this word. <laughs> um, then there's other documents, like other questionnaires that you have to fill in with your doctor. So your doctor has to fill out a bunch of things. Past things, like if you have uh, family genetic diseases or like difficulties, anything like that, all that kind of stuff. 
is where all these papers come into play. And it wasn't too, too bad for me, but I did have some complications. Now I know some surgeons will do top surgeries without hormones, because there's not everybody wants to go on hormones. Uh, but I don't know what the process is for that because, I mean, I didn't do that, so. <laughs> we sent all of that in, they approved it, uh, and then, yeah, so they told me, sorry, we don't take your insurance. So, uh, I ended up having to switch to another surgeon yet again, someone out in Ottawa, so that's actually good. I won't have to travel anywhere, nothing like that. Um, and the papers for them, they took basically the same pa papers that I had filled out for Montreal GRS. Sorry for the interruption. Okay, so, uh, where was I? Yo, I was real upset. I was like, I was ready. I was like, oh my god, getting my surgery, sent in everything, hell yeah. And then just heard that, <laughs> too bad, we're not insuring you, so. So, um, I got a call from my doctor, and this is the second place that will not take my private insurance. So, that's another place that has turned me down, and I have to be referred somewhere else. Again, <laughs> I'm kind of worried about because I might be doing it here where I am in Ottawa, um, but I've heard like some stories about there not being, I guess, I don't know, a lot of like surgeons that do that kind of thing here. I don't know if that's like accurate or not, but I'm, it just makes me nervous because like, you know, you get this plan, you get news or information and you're expecting that that's what's going to happen and then it changes all of a sudden and now... Uh, I'm just <sighs> so yeah that's what happened as soon as I found out about the Ottawa surgeon um, he basically made an appointment with me to come into the hospital and I was there for about two hours and that includes like waiting times and all the COVID questionnaires and whatever they have to ask you in the beginning oh, I feel like I'm at the dentist but it's more severe than that <laughs> P showed me a slideshow, basically just of his procedures and all that stuff. Let me know if you want a video on the different types of top surgeries you can get and what they do. Which was also really comforting because if I had to be switched to three different surgeons and wasn't like my first choice, I was very reassured with his results and I actually am now really glad I'm going with this person. After that, I had to fill out some more paperwork, which is fine. Um, I'm 20. So I was doing all of this stuff by myself. Uh, I don't know what the rules are for people who are under 16 or under 18. This story is like specifically to how I did it. And I was about to leave. She told me it's about a four month wait. Who knows? I could have my top surgery in like three months. So that's crazy. Crazy! Okay. So, um, yeah. That's like the summary, the quick version of how I've gotten here. Um, like I said, there's different requirements. The original doctor I had from the university, um, she had that three visits at least rule kind of thing. Some doctors require you to go to therapy for a bit before uh, first. Like I said, some doctors will, will require you to be on hormones for a year. Um, actually, I think that's one of, one of the doctors that I was supposed to go with. I think I was supposed to be on hormones for a year. Um, but like I said, I'm almost two years now, so that wasn't really a problem for me. I started this process, I want to say at least a year ago. But technically, you could get all of this process started within like a few months even. It just all depends on wait lists, where you're living, and your commitment, and how fast slash bad want you want it. Because like I said, there's this aspect in the medical field where you have to like basically prove yourself that you do need this surgery. Right now I'm waiting to hear back from my insurance. <laughs> so they accept my insurance but I also have to send in an application to my insurance to make sure that they will pay for it. I'm going to make a documentation or like a little vlog video of me actually getting my surgery and healing from that so keep an eyeball out for that um, <laughs> and if you have specific questions feel free to comment down below. I always answer my comments. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, share with your friends, your family, and your neighborhood squirrels. And I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye!